Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about a highly requested MLM that many of you have asked me to cover and that's Juice Plus. And this is one that has some, you know, unique products because Juice Plus doesn't sell juice, but they sell fruits and vegetables in powder form, which is an interesting take. Now look, I get that there's powdered drink mixes with fruit flavoring out there, but that's also not what Juice Plus is. Juice Plus is a supplement containing concentrated fruit and vegetable juice extracts. I don't really see why you'd gain any more health benefits popping a pill of strawberries versus eating the strawberries, but we'll get into their health claims and all of that in just a moment. In the meantime, let's talk about when Juice Plus was founded and who thought this was a revolutionary futuristic idea. Let's get into the video. So Juice Plus itself doesn't actually start with it being Juice Plus, but NSA or National Safety Associates. Right away, this already kind of just, I don't know. It just, it's weird to me because the NSA is already a thing, but they used to be called the National Safety Associates or the NSA. And you know, if they're sharing an acronym with a large department of defense agency, I wouldn't be really surprised if people got the two confused. Now, this could just be me like way over analyzing this part and people obviously are like, no Blair, we get the difference. But I just feel like there's some form of like legitimacy with a name sounding like that, that would kind of make people more invited to fall for it. But that's my personal opinion on it. Let's go back to their history. Jay Martin, the founder of the NSA, was a school teacher turned entrepreneur who founded the company in 1970 and continued serving as CEO until 2012. NSA got their start in marketing home fire detectors before they were mandated by building codes. And I don't think that's a terrible thing. Smoke detectors can save lives and it wasn't until 1993 that they became mandatory in bedrooms. So I'm not trying to knock the NSA with what they were trying to do, but yeah, let's go back to what other products they were selling. So in the 1980s, the NSA began marketing water and air filtration devices. One source states, Albert J. Martin founded NSA in 1970 to sell fire protection equipment, but switched to water filters in 1984. The company then began to grow rapidly, reporting sales of $380 million in 1992, up from $9 million in 1987. However, they also started developing and refining, as this archived page from Juice Plus puts it, an innovative compensation plan adapted from the network marketing industry. Or in other words, they started to become an MLM. In 1986, they officially became an MLM and apparently around that time also began making educational games for preschoolers too. And there's not much information other than that. All my sources just generally agree on the timeline, but there unfortunately aren't many details that I could find. The thing is, if Jay Martin had started out selling games to preschoolers and promoting awareness around smoke detectors, I don't think I'd be terribly upset. He was a teacher, so educational games sounds like it's something that's right up his alley. But instead he took NSA into the shady business direction, which I obviously just don't condone in the slightest. Now, it's not as if this business model wasn't questionable at the time either, because that same year, an expose was released on United Sciences of America, a supplement MLM, and revealed how questionable their business was, which side note, we're totally gonna cover them in a future video, just FYI, coming soon. But I guess that didn't really matter to the NSA because evidence and integrity usually don't matter that much to MLMs in the first place, which is why they don't really have an issue with this type of business model. However, instead of being accused of being a pyramid scheme, NSA was accused of being a Ponzi scheme. In 1991, an article was released from the Chicago Tribune and this is what it said. Removing impurities from tap water may be one of the latest eco fads, but a lawsuit pending in federal court here alleges that the main business of a Memphis-based manufacturer of water filter products is siphoning money from its bottom rung distributors. Now, more than 100,000 water purifier salespeople who contend they were bilked out of $5,000 and up a piece by National Safety Associates Inc. will get their chance to prove their charges. Their lawyers say they were victims of a giant Ponzi or pyramid scheme. Last week, US District Judge Brian Duff approved class action status for the estimated 100,000 individuals, partnerships, corporations, and other entities who invested in National Safety Associates' stair steps of opportunity. 
And let me just pause here really quick in this article. I know there's some people here that every so often I'll see a comment that is like, what is an MLM? Doesn't it mean men loving men? And in some contexts, yes, it does. And I'm not against that. Two consulting adults can love each other, but this is about multi-level marketing. And it's something you probably picked up if you've watched at least to this far in the video, I would hope. Uh, but if you didn't, there's that clarifying statement for you. On this channel, MLMs only refer to multi-level marketing because that's something we cover here quite frequently. Now, going back to that wording, stair steps of opportunity, that's no new language here. I know that we've all heard of climbing the corporate ladder before, so MLMs tend to take that flowery language and apply it to their own business models. The difference is that in order to climb the so-called MLM staircase, you have to bring in people below you. You need to recruit and build a downline, and it's more important than selling the product. Whereas with jobs that aren't MLMs, experience, hard work, high sales, all of that will theoretically get you closer to the top. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it doesn't rely on building a downline to get there. That's why this stair step of opportunity line irritates me and it's also pretty inaccurate, but moving on. The article continues. Duff's ruling results from a six count complaint filed last year by two distributors against NSA. The complaint alleges that the firm wasn't selling home water purifier systems as sales brochures indicated, but rather the opportunity to make money by getting other people to sell water purifier systems. Initial investments in an NSA franchise ranged from $5,000 to as high as $25,000, according to the complaint. There are people with garages full of these water filters all over the country, said Ronald Schrey, an attorney with Chicago's Beagle and Sandler who filed the suit. There was no reasonable opportunity to make money from the sale of the product. According to the complaint, NSA had up to 500 sales pyramids, each headed by a national marketing manager who sold distributorships for a fee. Each newly recruited distributor would sell sub-distributor ships and so down the line. Because of the nature of the alleged scheme, Shry mentions that NSA wasn't selling a product, but a form of securities. A positive ruling on the allegation could have a far-reaching effect on other firms using multi-level marketing plans, he says. Lawyers across the country for firms like Amway bend over backwards to avoid being called a security, Shry says. If we prevail, other multi-level plans will have to be quite careful to avoid that. Donald McKay of McBride, Baker & Coles, which represents NSA, refused to comment on the pending litigation. It's a narrow procedural point, he said about the class action ruling. There's nothing that indicates whether or not Duff believes this is a Ponzi scheme. So in other words, NSA got caught, their reputation plummeted, and in 1993, they were offering refunds. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic that some people were able to actually get refunds. It's just a shame that this all had to happen in the first place. The company's distributors got partial or full refunds for unsold products, and the Florida Attorney General's office prohibited the company from making claims and pushing products on distributors. The article doesn't state exactly what those claims were, but I'm pretty confident in betting that the company, whether an upline or executives, were putting out statements about how much better filtered water is for your health. I'm not here to debate whether that's true or not. Filtered water is generally considered better than tap water, especially if the tap water may not be clean. But if that were all the NSA had been saying, then they probably wouldn't have gotten in trouble for making unproven claims. Not to mention, NSA's filters may have done more harm than good. The Orlando Centennial states, NSA representatives have lied about having government approval for the company's products about the effectiveness of its water filters. Rather than removing bacteria, the water filters make contamination more likely. The Florida Attorney General's office agrees that with the allegation and recommends that consumers with NSA filters flush them with water for at least 30 seconds before using them. The office also warns against using the filters longer than their recommended lifespan. However, even with this against them, NSA was not done yet because in 1993, they came out with a brand new product that takes us to today's MLM, Juice Plus. Now the NSA was obviously in some hot water in the early 90s. So I'm not sure if Juice Plus was their way of distracting from the truth of what was going on or a way to get people hyped up about products again, or maybe a way of distancing themselves from the old NSA name completely. Either way, Juice Plus emerged and I'm inclined to believe the latter of those options considering how nowhere on the Juice Plus About Us page does it even mention their not so savory former name and tarnished reputation. It just reads as such. Founded in 1970 by 
Chairman Jay Martin, the Juice Plus company has grown from a small direct sales company into a highly successful privately held health and wellness company operating in more than 20 countries today. Our turning point toward a health and wellness focus occurred in 1993 when we introduced Juice Plus fruit and vegetable blend capsules. Even at that time, a growing body of scientific evidence was demonstrating that eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables is essential to a healthy diet and lifestyle. Juice Plus responded to that need with a simple and convenient product to help people bridge the gap between what they should eat and what they actually do eat every day. All Juice Plus products share a common nutritional philosophy that traces back to our beginnings in 1993 and helps us stand out from the tens of thousands of nutritional products on the market today. An emphasis on the whole food, plant-based nutrition that is so important in our diets. We have to have a positive impact on the communities we serve and on the world around us, guided by our corporate mission of inspiring healthy living by our seven core beliefs. We are authentic. We are intentional about being ourselves and fostering trust in our relationships. We create community. We work together, support one another, and give back to others. We value simplicity. We make everything from plant-based nutrition to earning extra income as simple as possible. We are approachable. We are open to new ideas and respectful of the opinions of others. We are relentless about quality. We settle for nothing less than the very best in our products, in our business practices, and from ourselves. We focus on longevity. We think of the long-term impact of our business on people's lives and people's health. We are inclusive. We celebrate all people. Everyone is welcome. I just, how can they say Juice Plus was founded in 1970 and then in the next breath say that being authentic is one of their core values? It just comes across as really shady and suspicious when they say Juice Plus was founded in 1970 because it's a downright lie. And even they say that a couple sentences later, which is weird. If you're going to say you were founded in 1970, but mention nothing about NSA, then just cut the crap and just say you started in 1993. Like, honestly, I don't know why that's so hard. Because NSA was founded in 1970, Juice Plus was founded in 1993. So how are you gonna sit here in your seven core values and say you're like transparent and honest, but then you can't even get that right? Now, as for how their products are made and why they even do this at all, I guess it's just a new kind of easy, cool way of trying to eat fruits and vegetables. And I'm not gonna knock the concept entirely, like not yet, at least. We will see how it holds up to the research. Both the ones that Juice Plus has on their website, as well as other third-party products, and just learn about these capsules in general. But first things first, Juice Plus says they first find farmers who harvest at the peak of ripeness. Then they freeze the fruits or veggies and dry them to remove the water and then create colorful powders with what's left. They store them in bottles and ta-da, they sell it to the consumer. It's as simple as dried powdered fruits and veggies. The ingredient list for these capsules is pretty simple. It's literally just a bunch of fruits or veggies or both, or you know, depending on what you select. They claim that these capsules support cardiovascular wellness, the function of the immune system, lung function, and healthy skin and gums. These aren't as expensive as I thought they would be either. It looks like they charge about $25 for two bottles and each bottle has about 120 capsules. Since they recommend you take two capsules every day, those two bottles should last 120 days. So, hey, at initial thought, just over $75 a year doesn't seem very terrible, and I'll admit that. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised because most times when we look at MLM products, they're usually the overpriced ones and the shittier quality ones too. But of course, that's just for one bottle. If you're taking the fruit, veggie, and berry blend, it'll be more, but it's at least for like a starting point, it's not as crazy as I anticipated. It's even pretty comparable to other brands that I saw out there. So what's the catch? Well, the thing is, even though you can view the ingredient list, you have to download the nutrition facts. And maybe Juice Plus doesn't think someone would take that extra step, but I obviously did because of course I will. And it turns out there's like barely any benefit to these things. Like seriously, it's got such a little, little teeny tiny amount of vitamin C and E, but nothing else. I feel like there's much better things, like you'd just be better off taking a vitamin if that's what you're buying these for, because not only are those cheaper, but it's a better source of, well, vitamins. 
The supplement and vitamin industry is pretty messed up as is. And again, like I always say, that's a whole separate video, but it seems like the actual benefits from Juice Plus are so incredibly minimal that they're just not worth it to begin with. But Juice Plus says they're scientifically proven and they've got all these studies to back it up. So that's obviously what I wanted to look into next. What do these studies say about Juice Plus? Who's funding them? And what do other people think about fruit and vegetable capsules like these? As cool and as too good to be true as they may sound, is science there yet? Let's find out. And it's time for us to take a break from the MLM madness and pay some bills with today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Most of you guys already know about America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. And I talk about them a bit here on the channel. They are a regular sponsor, love them, love their food, very easy to work with. HelloFresh takes out stressful meal planning and trips to the grocery store so you can just get dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less with over 23 recipes available each week. And I'm doing some shopping for the upcoming menus and whatever, just taking a look, you know, seeing what's around. And I'm seeing something called a Be Mine Bruschetta chicken for like a Valentine's dinner. And it's like a three course meal. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like that's so thoughtful. But HelloFresh has so many different types of recipes available from low carb, carb smart, vegetarian and pescatarian options as well to make sure that you're customizing your meal plans to fit your lifestyle and your dietary choices. So if you wanna get started today, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash MLM10 and use code MLM10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash MLM10 and use code MLM10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Links will be in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube and they should be in some kind of description box thing if you're listening to this in podcast format. Let's get back into the episode. For this portion of the episode, I'm going to take a look at as many sources I can possibly find to try and get to the truth about fruit and vegetable powder capsules. Then once we've sifted through this mountain of data, I'm sure you guys will be able to make up your own mind as to what seems legitimate and what doesn't. We're gonna go ahead and start with the studies that Juice Plus put out there. They state under the clinical research portion of their site that 41 individual Juice Plus clinical studies have been conducted. They list the hospitals that have studied them, then have the results below that. Just looking at all of this at a glance, you'd think, wow, that's actually pretty impressive. But the actual results and the data gathered isn't quite as black and white as Juice Plus would lead you to believe. Here's the first one they link to, which is a 1996 study. Here's what it says. This study measured carotenoid and tocopherol levels in human plasma after supplementation with dehydrated fruit and vegetable extracts. Serum lipid peroxides were also measured to assess the effectiveness of supplementation in modifying oxidative processes. 15 healthy adults, 10 women, five men, age range 18 to 53 years, consumed supplements twice daily with meals for 28 days with fasting plasma and serum samples taken at baseline and at seven 14 and 28 days. After 28 days, plasma antioxidant levels increased significantly. Serum lipid peroxides decreased fourfold after seven days and remained significantly lower than baseline at 28 days. Decreases in lipid peroxide levels were coincident with increases in carotenoids and alpha tocopherol and reflect functionally improved oxidative defense mechanisms. Because these bioactive compounds can act synergistically, the effect cannot be attributed to any one component, but it may reflect a combined mechanism of antioxidant defense. Marked increases in plasma levels of predominant dietary carotenoid and alpha tocopherol in all subjects indicate that supplementation with fruit and vegetable concentrates may prove effective in future intervention studies. And that sounds incredible, right? I mean, oh my God, the data shows some wonderful numbers here. So this has to be legitimate, right? Well, unfortunately it's, again, it's not so black and white. If you look first at the name on this study, you will see John A. Wise. All it takes is a quick Google search, John A. Wise Juice Plus, to see that he's not nearly as unbiased as he might appear. It turns out he was the vice president of research and development for a different supplement MLM, the same one that had an expose released on them in the 1980s, United Sciences of America. Remember that one? Yeah, looks like John A. Wise was on an MLM payroll. Well, in 1987, he joined Natural Alternatives International as the Director of Science and Technology or the NAI who manufactures, as you guessed it, Juice Plus. 
He even owned over 2% of the company's stock. So to say John was a bit biased would probably be a bit of an understatement. As much as I hate to say it, don't trust science. If a scientific study looks suspicious, it's important to see who conducted it. Scientists are people too. People have biases, their own agendas, and they can be corrupt. And in some cases, they can also make mistakes. And in this case, just because John's name has wise at the end, doesn't mean he's wise at all. Just another player for Juice Plus. I was trying to go for a pun here, but eh, my, my puns are crap. But all of this just sort of depresses me because when even scientists kind of stop caring about real research and getting to the truth, just to kind of conform to an agenda or a bias, or I don't know, to benefit the 2% of the stock that you own in a certain company, it just, I don't know, it's kind of sad. Anyway, since he was more involved with that first study, I'm gonna say it's safe to toss that one out. Let's go ahead and look at some more clinical research Juice Plus provides. In 1991, they had another study and oh wait, there's a familiar name. John was involved in this study too. Well, let's look into some other scientists on these studies and maybe they're not as biased. One of them is named Ronald R. Watson, who at first glance doesn't seem pretty biased at all. He's a professor at the University of Arizona and he's edited 88 biomedical books, particularly in nutrition and food sciences. I scrolled through his credentials and there doesn't seem to be any obvious bias here, at least none like John Wise's, but just to be on the safe side, let's look at one other study, a more recent one without John in it. And this one comes from 2006 and it says, the daily consumption of fruits and vegetables is a common dietary recommendation to support good health. We hypothesize that a commercially available encapsuled fruit and vegetable juice powder concentrate could support functional indices of health due to increased intake of various phytonutrients. This was a double blind randomized placebo controlled investigation of 59 healthy law students who consumed either FVJC or placebo capsules for 77 days. And the results of the study said that by day 77, there was a 30% increase in circulating yo T cells and a 40% reduction in DNA damage and lymphocytes in the FVJC group relative to the placebo group. Plasma levels of vitamin C and of B carotone increased significantly from baseline in the FVJC group, as did plasma oxygen radial absorption capacity. And hey, that's some complicated stuff, but it sounds kind of good, right? You're like, hey, this is, this is good. These are good results from an unbiased study. And that's all well and good until you look at Wikitalks and you take a look at this very study being debated. See, one of the main researchers on this study was Mary P. Nance. And according to Wikitalks, potential WPCOI, Wikipedia conflict of interest issues, are raised by the fact that the authors of Nance et al. 2006 have received funds from NSA, the manufacturer of Juice Plus. One user even replied, I don't think that the source of finance for a study, which after all does not entail the transfer of money from a sponsor to a scientist, but rather to his or her employer, should be considered grounds for a WPCOI. This would seem tantamount to impunging the integrity of every scientist who has ever worked on a study financed by a manufacturer. Is this what Rhode Island Red, one of the sources disputing Nance's credibility, presumably himself or herself, some sort of scientist is implying? Now, obviously there's a bit of back and forth here, wondering if there is an argument to be made about a conflict of interest keeping this study from being unbiased or not. I'm not saying that every single clinical trial funded by a company is automatically guaranteed to be unreliable, but it's fair to at least question how legitimate Juice Plus's research really is if John Wise was involved. Their scientists were paid by Juice Plus themselves and their nutritional supplements don't really say anything that impressive. So now that we've gone through a little bit of Juice Plus's research, let's take a look at the flip side. Does this fruit and veggie capsule even do anything? A nutrition studies article states, today I am going to talk about Juice Plus because this seemed to have received quite a bit of attention as a possible key ingredient to improving the health of patients around the world. Unfortunately, supporters of JP have not provided a full perspective and as a result misled possibly even unintentionally, many consumers. As a result, it is impossible for consumers to make a truly well-informed decision. We are going to use JP as an example of how all supplements and other quick fix promises of improved health should be approached. Currently, there is a small group of people who condemn supplements such as vitamin A and iron because they are isolated nutrients. 
they do so because there are studies that show that these isolated nutrients can be harmful, and as such, it makes sense to recommend against their consumption. However, JP is advertised as a whole food supplement, and because of that is considered a healthier alternative to those potentially dangerous isolated nutrient supplements. Now we agree, if truly a whole food, then yes, it would be a healthier supplement. But we have three major questions. One, is JP truly a whole food supplement? Two, even if it is a whole food supplement, how do we know we need it if we are already eating whole foods? And three, even if we prove that adding JP improves certain outcomes, are we sure that taking it won't hurt us in any way? It is important to note from the start that we cannot tell you JP is bad as studies have not been done to show that yet. To do that, we need at the very least 10 year studies in large groups of people. But that doesn't mean JP is safe either, rather that it means it hasn't been evaluated properly and as a result, we just don't know. And if you couldn't tell yet, let's make it clear that based on the limited data we have at this time that we do have concerns with JP. And I'm not gonna go over and quote the entire article or we'd be here all day. So let me just go over a few more bullet points here. The first argument, a well-cited argument I might add, is that nutrition studies makes it that when you dehydrate a fruit or vegetable in order to turn it into a powder, you lose a lot of the bulk from the fiber and as much as 90% of the nutrient with the waste. This is why, as the evidence seems to show, you're better off just eating the actual fruit or vegetable. I don't think science is there yet, I'm sorry. As convenient as a daily dose of fruits or veggies in a pill sounds or a supplement with everything you need, it's just not reality, at least not yet. Secondly, the source also argues that certain carcinogens are concentrated in fruits and powders like this when they're easily avoidable in whole foods. Now, neither I nor nutrition studies is saying that this is definitely the case, but we simply can't know. But it's getting into should have had a V8 territory because fruit drinks seem far more beneficial than this. Anyway, after they take a nutrient depleted juice when compared to its whole food counterpart, then process it into the powder, there's even more nutrient loss. What you're left with is the pitiful nutrition label we saw from Juice Plus earlier. And I'm left asking myself the question, is it really worth it? How much fruit do they use making these things? It's gotta be a lot, right? Like I kind of feel like all those fruits and veggies are being wasted into this crappy MLM powder. Like seriously, just sell fruits and vegetables, but not like MLM style or anything. Like it would just be healthier, require less processing. Like seriously, it's just not that hard. And that's not to mention that Juice Plus has also actually admitted that they've supplemented their products with isolated nutrients in the past. So even their own nutrition labels can't really be trusted given that information. Again, there's a lot more of this to source. Like they also go over the gummies if you're interested, but it mostly focuses on how eating an apple or an actual fruit is so superior to these capsules that Juice Plus is basically just a waste of time. As for other sources about Juice Plus, one of them, Devin Gray Fitness, went on a magnificent tirade over their studies and debunked them, questioning the language used and the results that I found as well. And here's what he had to say. When speaking with a Juice Plus sales representative, they immediately tout the body of research that has been done on Juice Plus. The claims that they do make are in relation to the research that Juice Plus has funded on their product. Off the bat, there is one major flaw that is reoccurring in the Juice Plus studies. They do not compare the effects of Juice Plus versus a multivitamin alone. Many of the studies only compare Juice Plus or Juice Plus and a multivitamin to a placebo group, in which case the Juice Plus group always wins. In addition, many of the subjects in the studies are noted to consume less than four servings of fruit and vegetables per day. This places them at risk for dietary deficiencies. However, this only proves one thing. People that supplement vitamin A, C, and E are doing better than those that don't. That's it. That's all you can really extrapolate from these studies. Many of the health benefits that are touted can be directly connected to vitamins A, C, E, and folate. That's all the studies really say. Supplementing with each vitamin enough to meet the daily minimums for health is enough to see some sort of a health benefit. In fact, each study only mentions that Juice Plus contains vitamins A, C, and E. They go on to mention the health benefits specifically attributed to those vitamins. These studies support my hunch that Juice Plus is less effective than taking a multivitamin. The salesperson I spoke with kept touting the perfect PDCAAS score of Juice Plus Complete, their protein powder line. The PDCAAS refers to how well a protein is digested by the body. It's true, Juice Plus Complete does have a PDCAAS score of one. That's because it's a whey protein powder. All whey protein powders presumably have a PDCAAS score of one. 
so do egg whites and soy proteins. In other words, virtually every whey protein product has a PDCAAS score of one. What is notable about Juice Plus's protein powder is that it provides a minuscule 13 grams of protein. For reference, ProGrade provides 24 grams of protein per serving and is similarly priced. In my experience, most commercial protein powders provide 18 to 24 grams per scoop. You're literally paying the same price for half the protein as other products. It's safe for families and kids. The salesperson I spoke to used this line repeatedly. I mean, she was really driving this home. Juice Plus is GMP certified. This means that what is on the label is actually in the bottle. That's great. I only recommend GMP certified products to my clients and I'm glad to see that Juice Plus is safe. However, that doesn't address my primary complaint, that Juice Plus is more expensive and less effective than a traditional multivitamin, which is also completely safe. As for debunking the studies, Devin Gray goes on and says how in the first study on one of Juice Plus's web pages, the placebo group saw an extract same cholesterol level as the Juice Plus group. There was no change there and the number of participants was incredibly low. There were small sample sizes in many of them, and even the researchers themselves in the study say they have no biologically plausible explanation for Juice Plus alone to have any impact on cholesterol lipoprotein concentrations. They didn't even compare it to a placebo in that one. These studies are train wrecks in multiple different cases, being conducted in a way that would lean in Juice Plus's favor. A different source argues that every single one of their clinical studies was funded by them and their claims are not only ridiculous, but completely irresponsible. It reads, "'Praying upon your guilt for not consuming enough fruit and vegetables, Juice Plus claims it can fill the gap for you.'" However, concentrated high doses of nutrients in pills may not always be bioavailable which means you are most likely peeing away the nutrients you paid so dearly for. Generally speaking, it's much more effective to consume vitamins and minerals in their original packaging, whole fruit, veggie salad, and not after they've been extracted and processed. There are no shortcuts for getting healthy or avoiding disease. Do you really think Juice Plus can protect your DNA, improve your heart health? The company actually makes these claims. Juice Plus makes a lot of money for its owners and maybe some of its top salespeople the rest of us should spend our money on buying more real fruits and vegetables. And not to mention, in case we've forgotten, testimonials aren't reliable evidence here either. Juice Plus distributors have been known to be especially guilty of this. Does it work? Maybe, but I'm not really convinced. If Juice Plus is as magical as they make it sound, I don't feel like that should be such a difficult point to prove. It doesn't seem harmful at the very least, not in the way like Herbalife has been anyway, but their studies haven't really persuaded me either. And hey, I know I've got my own biases about MLMs in general and how I think they treat their products. So you can make your own mind up about this too. And I'd be curious to hear what you think about this as well. But for now, we're going to head into the next part of the video, the claims. And there are an endless amount of claims made by distributors and a piece by Stephen Barrett from Quack Watch and what reviews really have to say about Juice Plus. So let's get into it. Stephen Barrett is the co-founder of the National Council Against Health Fraud. Yes, it has a fancy sounding title just as the NSA does, but this is not an MLM. This used to be a nonprofit voluntary health agency that focused on tackling health misinformation and public health problems. They took a strong position against MLMs and their marketing of health products, especially Juice Plus. Barrett wrote a very lengthy and well-sourced article on Quack Watch, so let's take a look at what he said. Although NSA literature has stated, we do not make any claims involving the prevention, cure, mitigation of any disease, NSA distributors have circulated statements that Juice Plus products have relieved a wide variety of discomforts. In 1994, I even acquired a 69 page booklet of endorsements and testimonials, which stated, these are some of the benefits found by people taking Juice Plus. Some notice these signs after a few days, others after weeks or months. These benefits may not apply to you, but you may want to look out for them. General sense of well being, more alert, more energy, more regular, better digestion, better appetite, sleep better, need less sleep wake up easier, wake up earlier, less urge to snack, less craving for sweets, crave fruit, vegetables and salad, weight loss, weight gain if desired, loss of inches from waist and hips, better skin tone, nails grow stronger and faster, 
hair grows stronger and faster, look better, clearer eyes, easier to quit smoking, easier to start an exercise program, handle stress more easily, better recovery after workout, able to work harder, higher athletic performance, faster recovery from injury, reduced allergies and sinuses, reduced arthritis pain, fewer headaches, less pain, lower blood pressure, improved blood sugar. Testimonials, of course, should not be regarded as valid evidence. Without well-designed tests, it is usually impossible to tell whether changes that take place after taking a product are the result of the product, a placebo effect, or other factors, such as the fact that symptoms often change with the passage of time. Nor is it possible to tell whether enthusiastic, financially motivated salespeople accurately report what they experience. So a 69, nice, plus page booklet of endorsements, and keep that in mind, Juice Plus came out in 1993. Barrett got his hands on this in 1994. So this is a year later. That's a lot of testimony and claims. Also, if Juice Plus can really help with all those symptoms, then it should be more expensive, like seriously. And that's just my opinion here, but I feel like when an MLM makes this many claims, it's just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. Like, oh, you're sleeping better? It's not because you made the decision to adjust your sleep schedule, it's Juice Plus. Oh, you're feeling energized? No, it's not that coffee you drank, it's Juice Plus. You know what I mean? Like whatever, but in a strange turn of events, one testimonial was actually from OJ Simpson himself. As Barrett states, the unreliability of testimonials was dramatically illustrated by the case of former football star, OJ Simpson, who was charged with stabbing his wife and her friend, Ronald Goldman. In March, 1994, shortly before these murders took place, he was videotaped selling 4,000 distributors at a sales meeting that Juice Plus had cured his arthritis. Testimony in the murder case indicated he was also taking sulfasalazine, a standard anti-inflammatory drug that could have relieved his symptoms. Subsequently, his defense attorneys presented medical testimony that Simpson was so crippled by arthritis that he could not have committed the murders. OJ Simpson did release a workout tape not long before the murders were committed, so the crippling arthritis argument didn't exactly serve him well, even though he was acquitted in that famous case. Point is, he wasn't cured of his arthritis, and it was reckless of OJ Simpson to make those claims, and it was just as reckless of Juice Plus to support them, even though I'm sure that was the least of OJ's worries. Their claims, to some extent, caught up with them. In 2005, the National Advertising Division of the Council of Better Business Bureaus advised NSA to modify certain advertising claims to avoid the implication that Juice Plus gummies are an alternative or are nutritionally comparable to fruits and vegetables. In 2007, the Complaints Resolution Panel for the Therapeutic Goods Administration Advertising Code Council ruled that statements on NSA's Juice Plus website were in breach of Australia's Therapeutic Goods Advertising Code. According to the panel, the clear message in the ads was that Juice Plus tablets and capsules are equivalent to fruits and vegetables and that consuming Juice Plus tablets would help Australians to consume the recommended five to seven servings of fruit and vegetables. The council ordered NSA to withdraw any representations that the products are equivalent equivalent to fruits and vegetables or that their consumption can aid in meeting dietary recommendations relating to fruits and vegetables. And you'd think that with all these claims, they'd have bulletproof evidence and reviews to back this all up, but they really don't. The reviews aren't promising in the slightest either. The positive ones read as if representatives had written them, ones that state, if it weren't for Juice Plus, I'd be dead. Juice Plus is literally a lifesaver. While the negative ones seem, well, unfortunately, far more accurate when they read. It's like taking a multivitamin at 10 times the cost. I don't know if these reviews are real or not, obviously, but if Juice Plus truly was fantastic and miraculous and all this kind of stuff, then I just feel like it wouldn't be so hard to prove, that's all. Another reviewer, Abby Langer, even gave Juice Plus a second chance. After a negative review in 2016, she looked at them again three years later. She reiterated what we've heard thus far and wrote, our culture seems to be looking for something quick and easy that boosts health and can stand in for food with as little work as possible. Juice Plus knows this and profits from that sort of thinking. They push your emotional buttons with, we know you're too busy to eat healthy, so here's a capsule of fruit and vegetable powders to fill the holes in your diet sort of narrative. Yes, the company does say that whole food is important, but there's some sort of sneaky marketing going on that gives unsuspecting people the impression that if they don't eat produce, they can pop a few juice plus capsules to get the nutrition they're missing out on. That's wrong. 
Juice Plus is no better than whole fruits and vegetables, is more expensive and has less fiber. It has antioxidants, sure, but they have no research to prove that their products contain more of them than whole foods or that it's superior to whole foods in that regard. She also states that one of the doctors, Bob Sears, that Juice Plus uses is a notorious anti-vaxxer. How a doctor can be an anti-vaxxer is something I just, it blows my mind every time because the studies are so clear and the evidence that anti-vaxxers use have been disproven time and time again. It's worrying to think that Juice Plus uses these doctors so they can appear more credible, no matter how misguided they may be. But anyway, back to Abby, she says, The Juice Plus for Kids line and the Family Health Study are both complete scams. Their Family Health Study involves Juice Plus customers completing yearly surveys to help study the impact of taking Juice Plus on their wellness. It has so far found that of the kids involved, 61% were eating more fruits and vegetables, 60% were missing fewer days of school, 71% were consuming less fast food and soft drinks, 71% were drinking more water. To the untrained eye, this looks fantastic until you realize that none of these outcomes can be directly attributed to Juice Plus. MLM Watch has published a great overview of the shitty research that is this study, but to summarize, there is no control group, the questions are vague and arbitrary, and the responses likely biased. I see a pattern of Juice Plus doing shitty research and using it to try and prove things about their brand that aren't actually true. That link to MLM Watch leads back to Quack Watch, the post by Stephen Barrett, if you were curious. Now, this is where I originally intended on ending our little review and claim segment. I was all prepared to say, hey, you know, they don't seem to work. The doctors that say it work aren't super credible, but at least they don't cause harm, right? Well, unfortunately, even that isn't the case. Though all these claims have yet to be proven, there's some seriously negative ones that came to light a while back. Apparently, no monitoring of potential adverse effects was reported in Juice Plus's studies because why give their own product a bad review, right? But in the year 2000, the first of three studies that showed adverse reactions to Juice Plus was released. And don't get me wrong, this study had a very low sample size too. So I'm not gonna sit here and claim that this one's perfect by any means while Juice Pluses are dismissible. But I want to take a look and see what happened here. Now, the first study's adverse effects were upper respiratory and musculoskeletal related and apparently deemed unlikely to have derived from Juice Plus. However, in the second, hive-like rashes were reported. Also, it's worth noting, I saw John Wise's name on this study too. So even a bias study couldn't ignore this, but it's the third in 2007, where some subjects had to withdraw from the study because of gastrointestinal distress. One medical report even suggested that it may damage liver function. That reads, a 51 year old woman with endometrial cancer whose condition progressed with prior treatments was referred to the MD Anderson Cancer Center phase one clinical trials clinic for treatment with an investigational agent. Initial assessment showed normal liver function test results. The patient felt well with no fever or change in diet. She started taking Juice Plus a few days before her initial visit to the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Liver biopsy results showed no carcinoma, but focal heptocellular degenerative changes and steatosis with mild sinusoidal dilation against a background of mild cholestasis, minimal lobular and portal acute and chronic inflammation were findings most consistent with a drug effect. On the basis of the timing of her elevated liver function test results, the Juice Plus supplement was deemed the most likely causative agent of the patient's liver injury and it was discontinued. Liver function test results peaked and improved, followed shortly by a second lesser peak and then normalized over four weeks. And because of this, the Cancer Network highly recommends cancer patients don't take Juice Plus. And well, I'm not saying that automatically makes it terrible. I'm sure there's lots of things cancer patients may not be able to have during treatment. But the fact that Juice Plus didn't state this or make that risk clear, and the fact that a whole food doesn't carry the same risk too, well, it's another reason that it doesn't add up. Yet, despite the length of this video, and I know this is a long one for me, and the seemingly endless amount of problems with Juice Plus's unfounded claims, they're still actually getting in trouble for their advertising. Italy's Business Insider said this in April, 2019. Hidden marketing with deceptive and non-transparent promotional methods, mostly linked to the use of miraculous products to lose weight, carried out in violation of the consumer code within secret groups on Facebook. 
This, in a nutshell, is the accusation of the antitrust at the end of an investigation procedure closed at the end of March made by the company of supplements and meal replacement products, the Juice Plus Company. Hence the decision of the antitrust authority to impose a 1 million euro fine for unfair commercial practice. More specifically, the AGCM makes it known that it has found a form of occult marketing carried out mainly through secret Facebook pages and groups, consisting in not making it clear that the sellers of Juice Plus products act within the framework of their commercial activity, which on the contrary, they falsely present themselves under the guise of consumers. In practice, therefore, the sellers of supplements and meal replacement shakes, according to the antitrust authority, pretended to be consumers of the same products within closed groups on Facebook evidently extolling their praise and potential so as to increase their purchases. If that were the case, it would just be another way to use new channels, in this case, Facebook, to convey strategies and tricks as old as the world. And I'm really not surprised, I'm just not. Cultish Facebook groups for MLMs just come with an MLM territory. Like, I swear, I have no patience for these people anymore. And my apologies if this article was quoted a little tricky, it's been translated from Italian, so just that's why. Expectedly, this isn't the only embarrassing situation Juice Plus has found themselves in. In February, 2020, the Australian Department of Health stated, the Juice Plus company Australia has paid penalties of 37,800 after the Therapeutic Goods Administration issued three infringement notices for alleged advertising breaches relating to vitamin products. The TGA alleged the advertisements did not comply with the therapeutic goods advertising requirement. This related to promoting the products for a condition that is not permitted for this medicine and health professional endorsements of the products. Direct sellers of these products should be aware that they have the same legal obligations as the company when advertising therapeutic goods and must comply with the therapeutic goods advertising code. They also include a general warning to consumers stating that no medicine is 100% safe and there's no miracle cures. And last but not least, the FTC here in the US had to tell Juice Plus that their representatives needed to stop unlawfully advertising that Juice Plus could prevent or treat COVID-19, as they had to do with many other supplemental companies we've mentioned here before. So. The FTC also added in their claims about their earnings and how they were misleading because I guess one claim just isn't enough for Juice Plus. Here's what the FTC said. Some examples of coronavirus prevention or treatment claims made by your business opportunity participants or representatives include, I for one will never take a vaccine for the hashtag Wuhan virus, hashtag Kung flu. I have never had an influenza shot. Why the hell would I get this one? And I have never had the flu as an adult, hashtag Juice Plus at Juice Plus. A post with hashtag juice plus, hashtag immune support, hashtag immune system, hashtag COVID-19 that links to another post with an image with the statement, more than 40 individual juice plus clinical studies have been conducted by researchers at leading hospitals and universities around the world and captioned with hashtag juice plus, hashtag immune support, hashtag immune system, hashtag COVID-19. Some examples of earning claims made by your business opportunity participants or representatives include a video containing the statements, there are a lot of people out there who have lost income. You may want to build a side income, you know, make $500 a month, $1,000 a month or more. There's no ceiling on this. It's whatever you want it to be. What would you want this to do for you? Maybe it could cover one of your bills like a car payment or enjoy more time and financial freedom. I can tell you those are both possible at the same time because I've been living that for the past eight years and it's wonderful to be able to offer that to other people. A video containing the statement, what would you do, especially now, so many people have lost their jobs or income, if you had an extra 500 to $1,000 a month or more, because it can be whatever you want it to be. And I know this video is going on way too long and I'm also getting real tired of the bullshit, but I think we all get the point here now. They've made many misleading claims about how these products work, their data is questionable at best, and you're just really better off eating an apple or you know, actual food. But before we end today's episode, we've got one last little detail to go over, and it's can you make money with Juice Plus? Well, over 57% of Juice Plus representatives earn less than $350 on average. Then another 26% earn less than $1,000 on average. So that's well over 80%, and another 11% earn $4,000 on average. So maybe 4% of average incomes of Juice Plus representatives earn above the poverty line, according to their own income disclosure. I need to be transparent here and say that this is their Australian and New Zealand income summaries, and their US one hasn't been released yet, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it's gonna be pretty similar. Oh, and those numbers are annual, not monthly. You don't make 350 a month on that 57%. That's $350 a year. So yeah. So the short answer here, 
No, you really can't make money with Juice Plus and you're better off getting a real job literally anywhere that isn't set up like this company. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's very long video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. If you want to see more content from me, you can go ahead and click down to my description box. There will be a link tree link available for like my second channel, all of my social media, Casper's puppy channel, all of that stuff. Everything will be linked below. So thank you guys so much for making it to another video. Love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh,